we know our characters better than anyone. We've, we've lived every single episode from the beginning, you know, whereas a lot of times the writers may not have all of the backstory. So they, I think they rely on us too, to be like, oh, you know what? I actually wouldn't say this because, you know, five episodes ago, this is what happened, you know, cause it is hard to write new material every day. So I think, you know, it does have to be a collaborative process. Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversation at Home program. I'm Jim Halterman from TV Guide Magazine. Today, we are going to dig into The Young and the Restless, which is celebrating 50 years on the air. Congratulations to everybody here. Um, it's a pretty awesome feat for any show to make it that long. And the, I feel like the show's just getting started. So we've got a lot of great people to talk about the history of the show. Um, so let's introduce everybody. First up, Melissa Claire Egan. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you? Hello, very good. Uh, then we have Sean Dominic. Hello. Uh, Christelle Khalil. Hi. Beth Maitland. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Yeah, Joshua Morrow. How's it going? Brittany Sarpy. Hey, hey. Michael Graziday. Hello. And last but not least, head writer and executive producer, Josh Griffith. Hey, Josh. Hi, hello. We, we just talked recently about the 50th anniversary for the TV Guide uh, for a yeah. story. So I'm going to throw kind of the same question that I did then, which is basically, you know, with 50 years to look at, how did you and your creative team kind of decide how to celebrate this occasion for the show? Well, we, we, um, we looked at where we were in story, which is where we always start with everything. And we had a lot of... Um, a lot of exciting things reaching sort of a, a, a climax in story. And um, we felt the best way to just bring all that together would be to create some sort of a big gala that would celebrate the town, Genoa City, which is a character in its, of, of itself on the show, and have all of these stories sort of pop, some things ending, some of them just getting started, stories getting started at this grand event. And once we came up with the idea of the bicentennial, everything just sort of fell in place. And then we decided, okay, well, let's make it a masked ball because we've got some intrigue that that, that needs to explode. And uh, just having people in masks created sort of an aura of, of mystery and suspense and that anything could possibly happen. So, and then everything just sort of fell into place and came together. Well, and, and going by every, anything could possibly happen, what do you do when you get pretty much your entire cast on the stage at the same time? <laughs> for the same scenes i'm guessing that might be a little hectic I, you know what it it was a little bit but i personally felt it went so smoothly it was really everybody pulled together everybody was just on their you know, top of their game and um there were long days but not as they they flowed pretty smoothly and uh, you know everybody was there everybody was 100% and and the, the final product is going to be just Fantastic, outstanding. Okay. I can't. I can't wait. Being a being a long time viewer, I will be watching. Um, and as much as I want to ask all of you about your storylines, I also want to ask about your experiences on the show because this is a SAG panel for SAG After Us. So, um, Josh, I'm going to start with you. I'm, you've been on the show for a minute. You started when you were 20 and has been on for a while. Go back to those first days. I mean, I'm guessing was there any kind of notion that this could be a, a long term gig for you? When did you start thinking about that? You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't know anything about soap operas. Uh, I didn't know that it was something that you could do for decades. Um, I was in college and I got, you know, picked to play Nick. And uh, I sort of just took it one day at a time. I mean, I signed a three-year deal, but I was like, at some point, they're going to figure out that they've made a terrible mistake <laughs> and replace me with, you know, somebody like Michael Grazaday. <laughs> but uh, they just sort of I just kept fooling them. So um, I realized that uh, it's not only an incredible job with uh, amazing security, but I was surrounded by incredibly talented people. I mean, I got to learn from Eric Braden and Peter Bergman and Melody Thomas Scott. And, um, you know, the show really let me grow up and, uh, you know, carve this nice niche for myself and uh it's been just the job of a lifetime i i have never once thought that uh you know i should be doing something else it's just been truly a uh 
an incredible lottery of a job for me. Yeah. Uh, Michael, kind of going off on that a little bit, when, what was your first day like on the show? Because when you came on the show, obviously had been very well established. And here you are coming in on your first day. What do you remember? I remember that it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, you know, there was so much material. Um, I was the third Daniel. They had hired one, got rid of him, hired a second one, got rid of him. And then I came in. So not only did I start immediately with new scenes that had been written, but I also had to retape some of the scenes that they had done with the other actors. Um, uh, so it was, it was daunting, but um, it was trial by fire and I couldn't have been brought into a more warm and, and welcoming set and environment. I mean, the, the cast here, I feel like we really are like a family for lack of a better word, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that translates every, every episode I see. Um, Christelle, you, you had worked quite a bit before you came onto the show, but did anything prepare you for what working on a, not just a daytime drama, but young and the restless would be, you know, cause you already had done a lot, but then you come into this world. What was that like for you? Um, yeah, it was, it was completely different. I mean, the, the pace of how quickly we tape, you could get one rehearsal and then you pretty much have to be on it. Um, it was pretty intimidating and I was working with Victoria Rowell and, you know, she had been around forever at soaps and, um, you know, I didn't know about the soap opera stairs. So I remember at the end of the scene, I like walked <laughs> away and they're like, no, you have to like look and, and stare. And so I kind of learned that pretty quickly, but, uh, yeah, it was definitely an adjustment for sure. What, was there anybody that you kind of could lean on in those early days? Cause it's such a fast pace. I don't even know how much time you guys have in between scenes, but was there anybody in the cast or producers that you could kind of lean on just to get some help if you needed it? Yeah. I mean, you know, Christoph St. John, who, you know, uh, played my dad, like he was my, he was my number one right away. And he yeah. really kind of like sheltered me and helped me. And, you know, he was always like a, like a dad figure for sure. Okay. Um, Josh Griffith, um, is there, is there a thing you do with new actors when they come in the show? Like how do you actually acclimate them to the pacing and everything if they haven't done daytime before? Well, I, you know, the, it's, it's, it's <laughs> like, it's like Graz said, it's, it's trial by fire. You really just have to hit the ground running. There's no, there's no easing into it. Um, so that's where you, you really, the actor it can make it or break it. If they can keep up, you know, they can be a great actor, but if they can't handle the pace, then this isn't the genre for them. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we've got people that, showed they can handle the pace. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Beth, I actually remember seeing Tracy for the first time on the show. I've been watching that long. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I remember, you know, it was kind of also opening up the Abbott family who, you know, was just starting to get established. And of course now is one of the core families, but what were those early days for you um, kind of feeling your way with this character and this world you were in? Well, um, we were, the show was in transition and they were phasing out a couple of families and bringing in new families. And so um, I was very fortunate and um, continued to just be amazed every single day I get to show up and do this, that they picked me. And so um, what, it was a really interesting time because they had uh, uh, Jack, the uh, Terry Lester played Jack at the time. They had him established already. They had brought in one John Abbott, the patriarch, and he didn't work out. So they had hired Jerry Douglas a short time later. And uh, so when Eileen and I started, Eileen Davidson, who plays Ashley, my sister, uh, we started within just a couple of days of each other. When we started, the guys took us on. I mean, we would go out for dinners. We would go to Terry's house and sit around the piano and sing and, and <laughs> uh, cocktails and they they saw this opportunity and they um, realized that the more relationship they could build with us, the faster we would be a real core family, a real uh, established relationship type um, influence uh, in the storyline. So uh, it worked. And <laughs> here we are 40 plus years later, <laughs> still around. And so um, uh, it was it was a little mind blowing because of the pace we talked about. But but in those days, we had a lot more time to actually actually do more than one take. Um, we, they were, they knew we, they really were investing in this family. So they worked with us a little bit. The producers would come out and give us notes and we could do it over again and, and kind of find our way. But I think it's a, um, it's a place where actors 
can I really have to have confidence and really have to make full commitment all in every minute. Yeah, what was did you feel the pressure of that your first week or two on the set having to kind of throw into this world? Joshua, I didn't have any, I'd never watched a soap opera. I didn't have any house <laughs> theater and like music comedy and stuff. And I didn't have any idea what I was getting myself into. So I just, I just, you know, braved it out <laughs> and, uh, and apparently it worked. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael touched on this a little bit, being an actor that comes in for a role that's already established and, and Sean, you did that with the Nate character. Um, can you talk about, first of all, how, were there challenges in that kind of taking on a character that's established to a degree and making it your own, but then also staying true to that character? Um, he was definitely established. I, I don't know how much he was able to show as the character. So I felt, I felt like I could bring more of what I thought to Nate, to the character. Uh, but it, it was, um, it was intense. Um, um, at first, when I first came on, I would start reading comments. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, you know, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> and you know, you, you'd have like 20 great comments and one comment, not liking you. And that one just sticks out. So, um, uh, it was good. And I learned not to read comments, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's important. Jo Josh Griffith, I wanted to ask you. When you do have a new actor coming in for any role, um, and, the, and the roles are the, the characters already established, how do you how do you guys craft that as writers um, to kind of lean into the strength of the new actor coming in, or do you just kind of hope that they catch up to who the character is? Well, I think it's it's a give and take, and it's sort of organic. You just sort of see what the character what the actor brings to um, the character, and with with Sean with Nate, it was a perfect example of he coming in and watching his dynamic, his approach, his personality led us to want to sort of reinvent the character and take Nate in a different direction, which has worked out very successfully, moving him away from the medical field and into the, the business field, which is kind of more what the core of the show is anyway. So seeing what what Sean brought to it kind of sparked the idea of, oh, you know what, we can we have an opportunity here where we can kind of reinvent things and move in a new direction. OK, got it. Um, Melissa, you had come from another show, another daytime drama, which you could think, oh, they're all the same. You just hop from one to the other. I'm guessing that's a very, pretty naive thought. But um, can you talk about, you know, being in one world and then coming to another? The productions might be different. What were the differences that you had to kind of get adjusted to? Yeah, I mean, the medium obviously is the same and the pay, the scary pace that everyone's discussing is so true. That part's definitely the same, but it's like a different family, you know, and Weiner had always been known as the number one soap. It was very prestigious. Um, I knew some people from the show, which made it a lot more comfortable to uh, jump in over here. But uh, but no, it's definitely different. You know, it's, uh, you know, not only, yeah, everything about it is 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 different except for the pace, but the, both incredible shows. But yeah, it's like jumping into a whole new different family and different okay. world. Yeah. Um, Brittany, we've already seen Elena go through a lot since she's been on the show, as, as all these characters have gone through a lot. Um, is there something you would like to see her go through? That, you know, Josh, Josh Griffith's here. You could pitch him a story right now. But, um, <laughs> but, all the time. Yeah, hit me, hit me. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that Elena's gone through a world of relationship drama and we can put that somewhere in the back, um, especially with what's going on currently in the storyline. Uh, I think it's time for her to, to delve into her own inner workings, her own inner de demons. Um, I've always wanted to see her um, have some issues with, we kind of touched on her being tired all the time and not being able to really handle the the stress and strain of being in the hospital world. So maybe we touch on like, she has a, an addiction problem with um, medication that she has access to. And, you know, that might turn into who knows what, but something, something um, where she's dealing with her inner demons would be great. Okay. I noticed Josh didn't write anything down there. So I didn't know <laughs> right here, Joshua. I'm, I'm all right, right here. here. I'm already thinking Nurse Jackie. Nurse Jackie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there we go. I've always wanted an evil twin, but that would be a lot of work. I'd <laughs> be like double the work. <laughs> double the work. Um, <laughs> you get anybody paid twice if you play two roles? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Does anybody else have a, a big want that they would like to see their character go through? I mean, oh, God, no, please. Go, 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 go. <laughs> this is like Josh's worst nightmare. I, gotta, I know, I, just, I know. <laughs> okay, here's While we have part. you here. <laughs> Oh, they're calling me to set. I gotta go. Yeah, nice exactly. Time to be <laughs> all right, all right. We can we can move on from that. But um, what about just favorite storylines? Um, anything that maybe impacted you personally that you either loved to play or was a particularly big challenge? I know Melissa, when we talked a year or two ago, you you weren't speak. Your character couldn't speak. So there's a lot of acting going on without moving and all that. We talked about those challenges. Um, anybody else have have a time in their history? Anybody want to jump in? Sure. Uh, Go, go, oh, go ahead, Beth. You go first. Oh, oh thank you. Sorry, Gross. Um, uh, <laughs> they have been um, as a part of our celebration. One of my favorite times in the show was when we had music and I got to sing and I had my own nightclub for a little while. And so they just posted today, I think, um, uh, my favorite memory of, of uh, poor Tracy, evil Lauren and her henchmen <laughs> made the audience not to come inside. And poor Tracy has to stand up in her, in her brand new nightclub and sing to an empty house. And uh, so I, I just I feel like um, music is something that we don't get to do. We get to do every now and then. And it's such an amazing fan response, such an amazing time we get. And I know this is time and money and all of these things put pressure on us. But I would I would love to see that revisited a little bit on our show. OK, Michael, you were going to add something there. Um, yeah, thinking about storylines that have kind of stuck out and that I enjoyed it. I think my first one would be um when you know they they put faith in crystal and i and and gave us that storyline years ago where we ran away and when i had the pleasure of working with her but it also took us from being relegated to doing you know more of like the kids storyline to getting to work with such amazing actors such as josh morrow um <laughs> you're welcome it was a lot of fun to get to work with people that i wasn't used to to working with and you know now it's all kind of come full circle and i'm just grateful to be working with crystal again okay Any, anyone else have a storyline that sticks out i think the storyline that he's sort of talking is that sort of all kind of encompassed around like um the death of cassie which was a brutally hard story to tell but i still to this day think it's the best story we've ever told I mean, we still tell it. So um, it affected everyone in town. Um, I thought the performances were amazing. The crew really, you know, all kind of just locked hands and and told this really difficult story. And it was uh, I, it was impacting. It was my favorite story and also my least favorite because I didn't really want to go through that. <laughs> but it was uh, it was fun. It involved everyone on on our show. Okay. How, how much do you guys pay? Oh, go ahead, Melissa. Oh, no, I was saying you touched on it before, but yeah, like you said, Jim, a couple years ago, as an actor, we're so like, I, I talk too much. I talk too fast. I use my hands too much. Like we use our bodies and our words so much as actors. So then having a storyline two years ago where, you know, Chelsea was in a wheelchair, couldn't move, couldn't speak. That was um, really uh, cool and challenging and new for me, something I certainly had never done. So that was really neat. And yeah. your best performance, you, you didn't say anything. You just were so quiet. You just, you just like me, just shutting up <laughs> for once. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you know, story, Josh, I, that story coming Josh, you, I would like a story where I don't talk for months as you're, well. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. I've got it in the works. It's you're gonna be coming. It's gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be not talking for at least six months. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. So it's breaking news, folks. <laughs> um, you know, you know. So, uh, Sean touched on this a little bit as far as reading comments and that, but uh, I think a lot of you are on social media. You probably hear from fans who are reacting to stories. Is that, is that a good thing for you guys to kind of be in touch with the fans via there? Cause that's a good way to do it. Um, or does it get in the way? Can anybody talk to that? Who's maybe doing a lot of social media? I'm not doing a lot of social media, but you know, the social media that I am doing, um, like Sean said, you go through, um, I, I found early on that I really just don't care what other people think. Oh. So when I see something that shouldn't be there, I just block the person and I move on from it. Um, but I think it's nice to be able to interact with the fans, uh, especially coming back after being away for so long. Uh, there was such a positive response and you know, I, I had no idea that so many people wanted to see me back on the show. So I was like, oh, this is this is nice. And a lot of them have reached out and and I do 
enjoy the interactions with them, even if it's just liking their comment, you know? It's one thing I love about our fans is how passionate and committed to us they are. And what they think really does matter to us. Where it crosses the line sometimes is when they get personal about, uh, you know, people's abilities or, or performances. You know, they're, we're never going to make everyone happy all the time. Everybody has... Um, you know, couples they like, everybody has, you know, stories that they want to go in specific directions. And I love hearing what they think. Um, but there has to be a line where it's like, look, we're all just, we're all just working our tails off trying to, to do something very difficult, which is tell a brand new story every day. Uh, you know, and I, I can only imagine what the writers must go through having to come up with new content every single day for, I don't even know how many shows we do a year, but it's a lot. Well, it's a lot, yeah. <laughs> I just, my, I always plead anytime I see fans at a personal appearance, was like, just trust us. Eventually, we're going to circle back to something that you like, but we are really working hard to make everyone happy. So just 100%, Joshua. And I also want to add, there has to be a balance. And so in managing social media, we've already talked, Sean talked about the, how damaging it can be to take things seriously, but we are invested. Just like Joshua says, we're invested so much. We give our heart and soul every day and do our very, very best to, uh, to, and it's fun. What the fun side of social media is, is we get an immediate response. We know what they think right away. And we didn't have that when I started many years ago, <laughs> and we didn't have it even... Uh, at the in the even with fan mail, it was weak separation between the time uh, someone wrote a letter and it arrived and got counted and then t- sent to our dressing room and then we read it. It was sometimes you know months and so. This immediate response to story, to how we're doing, it creates a really good, um, uh, we can, we can, it's really good input to, to tell us how we're doing and tell us how true we're, we're, uh, how responsible we're being with our work. Um, as long as you keep it in balance and understand that, um, there, there will always be that guy in his mother's basement, basement in his underwear eating Cheetos that has a lot to say. Um, so, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was I not supposed to mention him? Chuck? I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, yeah, and, and I love the fact that we get to interact with our fans because they—that's why we're here. They matter. I think Dolly Parton once said, um, "You don't milk a cow and then kick over the bucket." <laughs> and I think that's very true. We have—we are so supported for 50 years. These people, many of them from the very first day, are watching us and lifting us up and wanting to see us every single day. And so it's just an amazing responsibility. But I, I think we navigate it pretty well. Yeah. Is that yeah. Is, is that why they call it their stories? That's right. That's exactly why. Yep. <laughs> Get stuck in an elevator with fans that are rabid and see what happens. It's their story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm sure as you've all heard from the fans, whether it's in person or online, you know, the viewers, it becomes a family thing. I'm going to visit my dad tomorrow in Florida. We will talk about the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful because those are the shows they watch. And he'll be very excited that I talked to all of you today. Um, but it's it's a nice thing that, you know, he's 88. And that's something we talk about whenever I call. We always get around to like, what's going on in the show? Like, Dad, I'm a week behind. Tell me, catch me up. You know, so no question there. Just throwing that out there because uh, it's it's something I think all you guys probably have heard about. That it's they watch always- with their family. Always my favorite interaction at any of the events I go to when a grandmother shows up with her daughter, with her daughter, and they're standing there and they're all smiling. They've handed it down to each generation. They talk about the stories. I mean, I love that more than anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, a, a lot of you have been on the show for a long time, but then you've come and gone, done other things, and then you come back. What's what's it like when you kind of are in the cycle of daytime and then go out and do something else for a while, whether it's prime time or theater? Do you feel like those training muscles from daytime help or is it a kind of a jolt to the system when you're doing a whole other genre, maybe theater? Anybody anybody have an experience they want to share? Everybody chime in, but I, I think that if you can do daytime, you can do anything. Okay. Yeah, that has it. I mean, I, I like to dabble into a lot of other projects um, and I find that having training in, in daytime has helped me immensely with all of them. Everything else is easy to say it very plainly. I mean, like when I, I did um, an episode of New Girl and my God, to get through three pages, it took an entire day and I couldn't believe it. 
It's like, oh, we, wow. yeah, you know, <laughs> it's seen by now. <laughs> That's a thing too. You go to a, another, you go work on another show and you hear people complaining because there's three pages of dialogue for the day and you just want to slap them. <laughs> it's, so many takes. It's, it's like, we're doing it again. Let's go. What is that, baby? <laughs> Didn't you get it? Didn't you get it? One take. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is a whole nother world. I get to zone out and just keep Keep going, keep playing. You know, that that that's what I had fun with. I did a project with Brittany and uh, it was, I, I forgot how the other world outside of soaps is. I'm like, oh, we got time. <laughs> Let's sit here and play. And it, it was it was amazing. It was amazing to have fun and and really try different things, you know. Yeah, going back to so some, it's nice that we can ahead. like control the edit, right? Because if you do a, like a primetime show or a movie, you don't know what they're going to choose. And like, we have control because we only did it once. It's kind of like nice to have that kind of control, you know? <laughs> you yeah. know what's going to be It's the only thing you shot. <laughs> Go, I'm, I'm always fascinated because, you know, you guys joke a lot about having so much dialogue, which you do, and it's just a part of the job. What, what did you do early on in your career to kind of make sure that muscle was always solid and could deliver. Um, Crystal, yeah. did you have any tricks to kind of do that? Or were you just somebody that could get dialogue down pretty, pretty easily? No, I mean, I think, you know, I think it's a, it's like a muscle, right? Like the longer you're doing it, the more you're, you know, using that muscle, the easier it gets. So yeah, at first, I remember when I first came on the show, I was learning my dialogue, like, you know, a week in advance. And now it's like, you know, maybe a day, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> um, but no, I think, you know, it's just gets easier and easier as you do it. And people are like, oh my God, how do you memorize so much so quickly? And it's like, well, you would probably too, after a while of practicing and, you know, you kind of develop your technique of how you memorize and then it just becomes second nature. And what helps is, you know, you start to know your character more and more and more and, and the flow of your storyline gets easier and easier. I still do a week out though. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. What? What would you, Sean? I I'm with you. I do a week out. I even even it's not like intense work early on, but I read everything at least a week before and and read it every night just to lock it in. I I love right. this. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> right, Josh. Right, right, Josh. <laughs> Everybody has their system. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, Mara, Mara, what what's your what's your system? Since you do have a lot of patients someday, what's your system? My God. Yeah, I, uh, I show up in the morning, check it out. Like, ooh, twelve pages, no problem. Uh, Thirty, ouch. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, developed a pretty uh, good short term memory uh, when it comes to this, so. Um, I do not take my work home unless, you know, there's times when you're like, all right, the whole show is yours. You're like, oof. All right. Cause the, the worst thing for me, uh, would be feeling like the crew was waiting around for me. Um, I absolutely, uh, love the speed and the pace at what is required for us to effectively do the show. I find it very competitive. If I don't get something in one take, I'm, I'm like, sort of bummed out because I take it as a, uh, a challenge. I want everyone in that booth to go, we got it. Um, so, um, I really aspire to get everything in one take. So like everyone, I mean, we, we don't have the time. Uh, it's just a matter of logistics, um, to do like what Sean was referring. You have all this, you know, these opportunities to whatever, this is a, uh, this is a serious business. You got, you get one rehearsal with the, the cameras and then you go. And I would say 80, 85% of the things we do are in one take and then we're moving. Uh, you know, we might do another one because of a uh, technical issue or some line drop, but we really are a uh, very smooth, uh, efficient machine here. 
And, yeah, and I think what, this, oh, sorry. <laughs> sag, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, this is a SAG panel. So it's, I imagine that many of the people that are going to be watching are actors. So this is a really important, I think, aspect of doing daytime. Everybody has their own style. Everybody has the own, their own way that they work their process. Joshua has one of the most amazing brains. I have never seen anybody do this. He literally, I don't know if it's photographic memory or, or I don't know what it is exactly, but he does exactly what he described. He can look at the material and know it. I need to work on it a little bit, but that's, what's great about this. It's everybody's own process, but he's right. right. I tell people that are new. And if you don't like the take that you're doing, you have to fall down because <laughs> they will take it and that's the end of it. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> or or <laughs> don't, don't start out like Josh. Don't start out like Josh. Yeah, I do not recommend you uh, using my process. <laughs> it's been crafted over 29 years. So. <laughs> that's at least a 20 year process, right? Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. I'm like, the one main difference with soaps first doing other projects is that we're actually living these characters' lives in real time. You know, like I've been Lily for 20 years, so there is no, you know, inner work that I have to really dive into. Obviously, if it's something more emotional, more intense, there's a little bit extra work, but a lot of it is just right there for us because we've been living it, you know, whereas when you do a new project, you're kind of just kind of diving into this character, you're learning about them and you maybe have, you know, a few months to kind of do this. But for us, you know, it's, it's every single day and I... I can talk about Neil and all of that emotion is right there because I've lived with, you know, Neil for that amount of years. So I think that also helps us, you know, handle the pace that we have to do. Yeah. What, what advice would you give to actors coming into this world about speaking up? Because it is a well-oiled machine and things are moving fast. But let's say one of you or an actor just has something that doesn't feel right. Like the dialogue doesn't feel right or it's not being, you don't, you don't think it's true to your character. How do you kind of advise people to speak up, especially when it's like, I don't want to slow things down, but I need to ask somebody about this. Do it at the right time. Don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a collaborative. It at least a day. It's collaborative. I mean, I can go. I, we usually meet in the morning for blocking with the director and uh, the stage manager and the actors. And Josh Griffiths is usually standing. I always really uh, respect the hell out of him for that. He's standing back there. And if there's something you don't like, you have the director and your executive producer right there. And the three of you or the other actor or whatever, you can be like, I think we should ad adjust this. And like, they're never like, no, they always will always work it out. And we, you know, figure it out. I mean, we're Josh had me rewrite sport. an entire script this morning. I had to do <laughs> page one rewrite for him. It was literally 50 pages. That we right there on the fly, right, Josh? Yeah, it's it's a unique skill we have here. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they want to add? Um, yeah, no, I think that they respect it just because you know we know our characters better than anyone. We've we've lived every single episode from the beginning, you know, whereas a lot of times the writers may not have all of the backstory. So they I think they rely on us too to be like, oh, you know what? I actually wouldn't say this because, you know, five episodes ago, this is what happened, you know, because it is hard to write new material every day. So I think, you know, it does have to be a collaborative process. Yeah. Just don't start out trying to change stuff. <laughs> no. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who of who of my panelists here today? Who has really good memory and can remember what your character has gone through? I mean, Beth, your character has 40 years of things, but can you remember every little detail or if anybody, Josh, can you? Probably. I mean, if you, if it was like a trivia game, I'm pretty sure I could pull up almost anything you asked me, but uh, you know, uh, I think Crystal said I, these, I don't even feel like I'm acting anymore. I feel like Nick and Josh are sort of this gray area, you know? So uh, I've known my character inside and out. I remember what he's gone through. Um, you know, I, I know the writers and the producers trust us, uh, you know, to, to get the jobs done. And uh, we do. We crush it. Yeah. We, do. <laughs> we crush I know. it. I feel like celebrating 50, 50 years, you guys are just getting started. Um, so I'm just going to say for myself, thank you for this wonderful chat. It was great to get all your feedback on working on the show for all this time and, um, and what's coming down the line. So thanks for your time. And for the SAG after people watching, thanks for your time watching us. 
Yeah. Do you guys want to do it again? I, let's pick a date in August. Many, we have many open days in August that we could do this again if we want. Can I get one of those? Can I get that signed? I want yeah. one of those. Yeah. My dad needs one, Josh. You could send my one his way. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys, thanks, everybody, um, for doing this today. It was a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.